So hello and welcome back to another episode of Love from Christ Podcast, a show where we encourage you to find spiritually and financial balance in their life through the abundance grace of God. On our podcast today, we have Mr. Ken Collar, who is the owner of IH Buddy. IH Buddy is a consultant agency that helps entrepreneurs hire virtual assistants to gain more freedom. And today we're going to discuss how Mr. Ken has created such a mag- magnificent agency. So nice to have you today. Hey, great, great, man. I, I definitely appreciate being on your podcast, and it's an honor to be here. Um, but yeah, but uh, it's IHR Buddy. IHR Buddy, so yeah. sorry. And, and it stands for International Human Resource Buddy. Okay, okay. So what led you to creating um, IH Buddy? So essentially, IHR Buddy, um, one of the things in which we do is we hire, we train, and we manage virtual staff. Uh, most people call it remote staff, right? And we pair them with different business owners uh, with the whole purpose of helping the business owner be able to free up that time, get more work done, and not be so stretched out. <laughs> so that that's the main goal of IHR Buddy. Um, I created IHR Buddy almost two years ago, um, and I started with just you know, one one staff member, and we then grew into over 100 plus. Wow, 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 wow. Um, so would you say it's like, it's always a great thing that you started like a year ago because since everything's online, you definitely benefit um, yeah. with this virtual assistant. Yeah, I can definitely say, man, throughout all the stuff that happened in the pandemic, um, you know, all the, all the bad things, I think my business was able to scale the most during the pandemic because, you know, of course, since the pandemic happened, like business will never be the same again, right? Everybody's working remotely, working from home, even kids doing homeschool now, right? Yeah. So, um, just having somebody that can work remotely uh, from the desk or that phone and help business owners serve their need and serve business owners and help them with their needs, um, it, it, it was definitely a great uh, great season for me. That's great. That's great. So what does your virtual assistant agents, agents um, you know, what do they do for the entrepreneurs? Do they create videos? Um, so... Virtual assistant. All virtual assistant means is somebody that can work virtually, right, from a computer or from a desk. And as a business owner, just about most of the stuff that we need done in our business can be done from a computer or our phone, right? <laughs> so, yeah. the, so the virtual assistant, they jump in and help business owners out. But when we talk about virtual assistants, you have different type of virtual assistants. You have um, website builders. You have executive assistants. You have customer service assistants. You have graphic designers. You have all type of um, all type of niches, right? When it comes to being a virtual assistant, so whatever you're doing in your business, right? For example, this podcast, right? Um, if you don't have time to send emails out, you don't have time to search um, people to be on your podcast. If you don't have time to create graphics for your podcast, you can hire a virtual assistant. Let them come in and assist you doing all of those things. Of course. You need to put the proper systems and processes in place to get it done. But that's what a virtual system is. Come in and help the business mm-hmm. owners get, get done what needs to be done. That's great. So why would you say an entrepreneur should look to get in a virtual assistant? I would say um, as a business owner, we all jump into business for a few different reasons, right? The biggest reason most of us go into business for one, financial freedom, right? We want to be able to scale. We want to be able to grow. We want our family to be financially secure. I uh, wonder. Second reason is um, like we love helping people. We love solving issues and solving problems. Right. The one. The third reason most people go into business because you want to live on your own terms. You want to have freedom. Right. You probably ain't got tired of working a job, but don't want to keep working a nine to five. You want freedom. You want to be able to move around, do what you want to do, hang out with your family, your wife, your kids when you want to do it. And a lot of times. Um, it's hard to do that when we're working 15, 16, 18, 20 hours a day in our business, right? When we're when we're when we're the operator in our business and not the owner, right? It's hard to do that. So when you hire your virtual assistant, let them come in. They're able to help you free up your time, right? They're able to help you get things done a whole lot quicker, which in returns help you to free up your time as a business owner and should be able to help you generate and create more money in your business by having somebody else come in and do the things. Um, that's eating up a lot of your time. That's, that's great. That's great. So, what are the steps to hiring a virtual assistant? Um, before you can hire anybody in your business, right? First, you want to identify 
and this is every business owner, right? Whether it's a virtual assistant or just a regular employee, right? <laughs> Before you hire yeah. anybody, first you want to figure out, one, where do I need help with? right what are the things that's eating up a lot of my time what are the things that i'm doing and i'm not great at right first you want to identify those things right um one of the easiest ways to do that and i always tell entrepreneurs to do this right in your business there's things that you're doing all day every day in your business right but it's so important that we take the time to write down a list of everything that we're doing in our business, right? Write down everything you're doing in your business, whether it's sales calls, whether you're doing marketing, whether you're creating graphics, right? Whether you're sending out emails, doing marketing, whatever it is, write down a list of everything that you're doing in your business, right? And then I want you to do this if you're a business owner. I want you to do this. Highlight everything green that you're doing, that you love doing, right? And that you're great at doing. Everything on that list, I want you to highlight green, what you love doing and what you're great at doing. Secondly, I want you to highlight everything on that list red, the things that you're not great at doing and the things you don't like doing. Also on that list, I want you to add this on that list. I want you to add the things that you want to get done in your business, but you're not currently doing it because you don't have anybody to help you do it. So those three things, right? Yeah. And the reason you want to do that because of course, we got a lot of things that we do in our business, right? But when we're able to write it down on paper, we're able to identify, oh, man, I really do a lot of stuff in my, in my business once you're able to see it on paper. The next thing you're able to say, okay, cool, it's a lot of stuff, but how do I start to delegate? How do I start to give this, this work to somebody else, a.k.a. a virtual assistant, right? <laughs> how do I start giving this workload to a virtual assistant? Next, you will look at that list and say, okay, cool. And here's the thing, right? Whenever we hire you, we hire you for a few different reasons. One, because we're doing something in our business um, and it's taking up a lot of our time and we want to free up our time. Or either we hire somebody to come in and do the things that we don't know how to do well, right? But when you look at that list, the first thing that to look at is everything that you highlighted green, right? Because the things that you highlighted green is going to be the things that um, you love doing and the things that you are great at doing. And the thing is, most times the thing that we're great at doing is probably the thing that we're doing the most in our business. You get what I'm saying? You're right, you're right. The stuff that we're great at doing is probably the stuff that we're doing the most in our business because we love doing it, right? But yeah. also, on top of that, that's probably the easiest thing to train somebody else how to do. If we're doing something, we're great at it, and we're doing it a whole lot in our business, it's probably the easiest thing for us to train somebody how to come in and do. All right. Um, and then you just go down the list. Okay, I'm spending X amount of hours doing this task. you right. It's taking me two hours to do administrative work. Let me hire somebody else to do that, right? It's taking me two, three hours to send out podcast invites. Let me get somebody else to do that for me, <laughs> right? Um, hey, I'm not having any good luck at getting great guests, getting enough guests on my podcast, right? Let me hire somebody to help me get more guests on my podcast, right? Whatever the case is, um, you can. Yep. Yeah. So I first, yep. Yeah, so first, identify the things you need help with. That's the first step. And then once you do that, you start the hiring process. <laughs> you start the hiring process. Um, yeah. Um, whenever you start the hiring process, and I would say this right here, right? Whenever you're hiring a virtual assistant. It isn't, it isn't all about just hiring people to come in and help you with your business, right? If you got a startup idea in your mind, right, and you want to get out here and start it, you, uh, did, did you know the biggest reason most businesses never get started? It's because the people that have the ideas, they don't necessarily know how to execute or how to get it done, right? But what if you had an idea for a business, right? What if you say, hey, I want to start selling T-shirts, right? I don't know how to create a, a website. I don't know how to manage my Shopify. I don't know how to research vendors. I don't know how to place orders. If you don't know how to do all of that stuff, right? Hire somebody else to come in and say, and hey, come in and help you do that stuff. Hire a VA to come in and help you figure that out. Somebody that got experience creating graphics. Somebody that come from the, um, the, the uh, merchandise or the e-commerce industry that can help you set up a website, right? Hire the right person. 
So it, it isn't about just hiring somebody to come in and help you in your business um, because you need help. It's also about hiring somebody to come in and help you figure stuff out and get things done instead of making excuses, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I like the fact that you, you broke it down into different acts of, I guess, what people are in business. You know, some people are much further and some people just started. And yeah. a virtual assistant can help in both ways. That's definitely. So what is the cost? of having a virtual assistant, if they're going through your agency, what was the cost be? So here's the thing, right? Um, whenever we hire virtual we don't only hire virtual assistants, right, for business owners. Um, we train them and we manage them as well. One of the biggest issues that I hear a lot from business owners are, hey, I hired a virtual assistant, but hey, I'm not quite sure if they know how to do what I need them to do. Hey, I don't know how to manage them correctly, right? <laughs> There's yeah. a lot Two biggest things that um, and I hear for entrepreneurs, right? The one we hire we hire VAs, we train VAs, and we manage VAs for less than eight dollars an hour. For eight dollars an hour, you can have somebody come in that's trained and managed, um, that's specialized in what you're doing in your business. So you say, hey, I want to generate leads. We can pair you with VAs that can help run ads for you, organically generate leads for you. Reach out to people to be on your podcast or your show. Right. Or, or reach out to influencers to help help push your brand for you, whatever the case may be. You can always hire somebody for that. Right. So hiring, then we train them and then we manage them. So everything from making sure your VA is equipped for the job, make sure they show up, clock in, clock out on time, make sure they get paid on time, make sure they have insurance, make sure they work every single day. Right. Um, assist them if they need help with something. Right. It's a lot of times as business owners. We want to hire people because sometimes we don't quite know how to get something done, right? And to be honest with you, your VA may not know how to get it done either, right? <laughs> but when we when we when we're here as the management team, if your VA say, "Hey, hey, uh, hey, sir, I can't accomplish. I can't. I'm not really great at what you want me to do. I'm not really great at writing this ebook. I'm not I'm really great at creating this website, right?" As part of managing your VAs, we would step in and say, "Hey, sir." The VA isn't so great at doing this, but our team is going to step in and help your VA get this task accomplished for you, right? You, <laughs> so whatever it is you need done in your business, we can pair you with the right person, make sure they're trained, and we can step in and manage them and make sure everything that you want done in your business is taken care of. That's great. That's great. $8 an hour. You can't have your full-time person in the U.S. for $8 an hour. Yeah, so where, where do you find this... Where do you find these VAs? Because this is a, is a very reasonable price, I, I guess, yeah. And I'll be honest with you, most of our VAs, they come from, uh, they're international. They come from, um, most of them are from the Philippines, right? Um, and that's one reason we're able to, you know, we're able to pair you with great virtual assistants for a low rate, right? In the Philippines, you have individuals that says, you know, every, that, that's smart as I am, right? Speak better English than me, uh, great at certain things, <laughs> just like we are, right? But it's yeah. a difference living in a, a developing country versus a developed country, right? So, of course, you know, the pay scale, the pay rate is a lot lower in the Philippines, right? Um, so that's how we're able to get you great talent for, you know, for, for a little less than what you would pay for, in, for over here in the U.S., right? So we have VAs from the Philippines. The other great reason I like hiring people from the Philippines, the English and the communication is really, really great, right? Most Filipinos speak American English. And speak English really well. The third thing is education is free in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So most people that most VAs that we hire, they either have a college degree or have some kind of college experience. That, right? That, that is dope. That is dope. Uh, yeah. So not only that, the the Filipino culture is most people in the Philippines, they you know they they grow up and they want to get a job for a foreigner. They want to get a job for an American, right? Um, they want to have an American company that they work for, right? Yeah. Um, you go over to the Philippines, you'll see all type of companies in the Philippines. You got Chase, you got Xerox, you got Xbox. Just about all of the big companies that we have in the U.S. that call centers are over in the Philippines. So when you call your bank, you're not on the bank with an American. Mm -hmm. You're, most times you're on a bank with somebody from the Philippines. Wow. When you call in chat support somewhere, Uber, wherever you're at, you're calling to talk to somebody in the Philippines. Wow. Wow. <laughs> once I figured that out, once I figured out the secret, I figured out, hey, 
this is how these billion dollar companies make billions of dollars and stay in business, right? One, by being able to source cheap labor um, or more affordable labor, being able to, and also in the Philippines, um, in the Philippines, here's the thing in the Philippines, once you, once you find a great job, it's hard for you to leave that job, right? So if you're a great company and you're a great boss and you're paying your VAs well and you're taking care of them and treat them like family, most times your VAs will never go anywhere, right? The loyalty that most Philippines have is um is undescribable. <laughs> so those are just like some of the reasons why I decided to hire internationally, internationally um over locally. Wow, that, that's great. So I'm assuming that, you know, with all this great success, you must have some challenges you had to overcome to get this agency to this caliber. Yep. So what was, what were some challenges you had to face and how did you go about? And I'm glad you asked that. that, and I'm glad you asked that, right? Um, the very reason I started IHR Buddy was because I, I, I went through issues, right? I went through some things in my life. I went through a period um, three years ago that changed my life, right? Um, I run before that I ran a successful credit repair company for five years. Right. Um, as of three years ago, I sold my company. Right. But I didn't sell it because I wanted to, I felt I sold it because I felt like I had no choice, but to sell it. Right. Three years ago, while I was, my company was growing and, and becoming successful, my previous company, I lost my, um, my son lost his mom three years ago. Right. Uh, sorry for that. On his, on his 10th birthday. Lost his mom on his 10th birthday. And at that point, while I'm running a successful company, I'm dealing with grief at home. I'm going to counseling, trying to make sure my kids are okay. Right. I'm going through depression. Um, I felt like everything is going wrong in my life at that moment. But still, I had over 600 clients that knew nothing about that. Right. All they wanted to know, like, hey, what's going on with my services? I tried to call you. You ain't answer the phone. <laughs> so I had no, I'm at, I'm at the waiting at the funeral. I got people testing about business, right? Wow. And at that time, I didn't have a team, right? I didn't have a team like I have right now. I didn't have systems in place. I didn't have processes in place, right? So at that time, while I had 600 plus clients and going through my own um, life crisis and trauma at the time, I was burnt up as an entrepreneur, right? I was tired, I was burnt out, right? And I was ready to throw the towel away. I'm like, man, I should, you know, forget this, forget these clients, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm dealing with some, some myself, right? And I, and I went through a period where I was burned out and I ended up selling my company, right? But I made the decision that anything I do moving forward, I never do it without having a team built from the beginning, right? I never do it without having processes and systems in place from the beginning, right? Um. So that's how I started IHR, but I said, listen, <laughs> listen, if I ever start another business, I need to build my team, right? I need to build my team of people that can come in and help me. And I started researching, I started um, researching ways to outsource, right? I started researching ways to hire um, and build teams, right? And I came across virtual assistants about three years ago. And I was amazed. I'm like, man. You can hire, really hire somebody directly from the Philippines for three, four, five dollars an hour, right? Because because he, here's the thing, right? Whenever we're running a business, we all need help, right? Everybody yeah, takes right. help even to us, right? Whenever we're running a business, but the main thing is like, hey, we don't know if we can afford that help, right? We don't know if we can afford to hire somebody to come help. So when I discovered, hey, you can hire someone to come work full time for you in your business for uh. Three, four, five dollars an hour. Uh, it changed my life, man. I started hiring, right? <laughs> I hired one person. I hired two people. Then I started telling my friends and, and family and um, business partners, and they needed virtual assistants. I started hiring virtual assistants for them, right? And then after a while, I'm like, man, I think I got a business here, <laughs> and I created a business out of it. Of course, it's been hard. Of course, it's been tough. Everything we go through, there's a learning curve, right? I made a million mistakes. I just make it look good right now, right? <laughs> and then it was horrible, man. Uh, it was horrible. But I took some losses. In the beginning, when I first started my business, um, I attracted and I had some real high influencers as my clients, right? Um, 
but because I was struggling, I was just now starting my business. I made a lot of mistakes and things that I shouldn't have done and things that I learned along the way. You know, I kind of lost some of those, some of those contracts and some of those clients that I had because I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning of building this company, right? Yeah. Everything that I learned, all the lessons, right? And I learned from those lessons. All the losses and I turned them to lessons and I learned from it, right? Um, one of the biggest things that I learned whenever you're hiring people, no matter where they're from, no matter the situation, no matter what it is, treat everybody with respect, treat everybody the same way you want to be treated, right? No matter where you're from in the world, people got family just like you got family, right? Um, so that so I learned compassion and, and empathy, right, from, from building this business. Um, I learned how to be patient, right? Uh, I learned how to be patient. I learned, I learned how to deal with people differently, right? Based on everybody has different personalities and behaviors and traits and ways that they learn and things like that. And I, I learned how to be patient and I learned how to deal with people differently, right? Um, <laughs> so those are like some of the things that I learned from all the downfalls that I had in my business. But yeah, it was definitely some, some downfalls building IHR Buddy. That's great. Uh, I definitely want to like talk about, because you talk about like mental health and are you still in burnout when you're going through that time of grief. What, how would you, I guess, advise, you know, a young entrepreneur, a new entrepreneur, so they won't, you know, get burnout, you know, when life change or the situation change? I would say, I would say the, 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 the top, three things every entrepreneur has to learn how to do, right? Um, and, and it took me a long time to learn this as well, well, right? You know, I was a high school dropout, father at 14 years old. Um, I became a father at 14 years old, raised my daughter, single dad by 19. Um, so when you talk about being a parent, right, and needing help, like that was me for a long time, but my issue was not knowing, not knowing how to ask for help, or not not accepting help when it's given to me, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's the same thing in entrepreneurship, right? Um, the main three things that you can learn as a young entrepreneur is one, how to identify when you need help and what you need help with, right? Never be afraid to ask people for help. Surround yourself around people that can help you. The third thing is being able to accept help when it's given to me. Like when I was having my business, I was going through all of this. I used to get people ask me, hey, let me come help you, right? And you need some help doing this. You need some help doing that. We all get that. We Nah, we good. I'm good right now, right? Um, and things like that. I didn't know how to accept help when help was given to me, right? Um, and I did, and I, and I didn't, definitely didn't know how to ask for help, right? Um, but those are the things all three things as an entrepreneur, right? First, identify when you need help and know how to accept help when it's given and knowing how to ask for help. Um, and once you're able to do that, especially the piece and identifying when you need help, uh, that's definitely going to help every entrepreneur go a long way. That's, that's definitely great. That's definitely great. So where do you see the future of virtual assistant? Like the, the whole industry uh man you know the way the way in which although you know although everything's getting a little better the pandemic's getting a whole lot better um like i said before business then the way we do businesses will never be the same again everybody's turning to working working remotely working from home now um so the business of virtual assistant and outsourcing it's gonna never go away everybody's gonna always need help right and when you can hire somebody remotely, have them come in and help you, now you don't have to pay overhead. You don't have to pay for an office for them to come in and work at and all of that stuff. Just the fact that you can save money and now you can source and find help from all over the world versus locally in your city or your state, right, to come in. I don't think the business of outsourcing or hiring virtual assistant is going never, to never go away. It's growing. You got a lot of people that's just now finding out what virtual assistants are and what they do, right? This is a term of something I've been doing for the last three years, but I'm talking to 
millionaire entrepreneurs that's just now learning where the virtual assistant is. That's just now hiring that first virtual assistant, right? Wow. Uh, and I look at that and say, wow, this is something that I heard of three years ago, but I got people that are making millions and millions in that business. And they're just not learning about it. And I, and I say, this is definitely an industry to be in. Um, um, and not only that, man, but but um, you know, we all want freedom. We all want to do what we want to do. We all want to balance family, life, and business, right? And one of the only ways to do that is by having help, right? So we're gonna always need help as entrepreneurs. Um, so I don't think that the business of virtual assistants would never get old or, or ever go away. That's great. That's great. So what do you see um, IH buddies in the next five to ten years? Oh. In the next five to ten years, I want to see. I, I look at IHR Buddy as the number one virtual staffing company in the world, right? Um, we're working on a plan right now where we're going to be able to train tens of thousands of virtual assistants um, for other business owners and just people that just want to learn, right? We created a, um, a a training certification academy called IHR Buddy Academy, where if you're a virtual assistant or if you're a business owner that have a virtual assistant and you want your just virtual assistant to get upskill and and learn and, and learn new things and learn new skills, you can enter them into our um to our academy, right? So our goal over the next ten over the next five years is to train tens and thousands of virtual assistants so that they can have always have a job, right? So if I bring you into my company and I train you on social media management, you can always get a job as a social media manager, no matter where you are. Right. So my goal is to give back to the people that's been helping me grow my company and give back to the Philippines and give back to people all around the world that just want to learn um, so they can go out and get jobs remotely and um, start to build financial freedom and have financial success for themselves and their family. That's great. That's great. Um, so, and also, I want to ask this last question. How has your faith in God like, like helped you through this whole process, through grief, to going through the storm in business, to where you are right now? I have your faith. Man, I say as a business owner, you got to have faith. Like You got to have faith and believe in, in, in the higher power, right? You got to. You got to believe in God, man, because like I said before, man, you, 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 you get on Instagram, you get on social media, you know, you watch so many other business owners becoming successful, doing their thing, and you start to doubt yourself sometimes, right? You start to doubt yourself and wonder, hey, am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right decision? Am I in the right industry, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because you see what everybody else is doing around you, right? But sometimes we got to realize, like, even when things aren't going the way we want it to go, right, it's a process for everything, right? We got to believe in that, that God is, you know, God is making sure that we're, we're right, um, before he put us in the position that we want to be in, right? We got to just be patient sometimes. So, you know, you definitely got to believe in God. There's no way you're going to have patience when you're growing and building your business, right? You got to have faith. When I was dealing with grief and depression and all of that stuff, man, a lot of times, all I, the only person that I felt like, the only person I could talk to sometimes was God, right? <laughs> talk to God about things I had going on. And if I talk to somebody else, they might think I was crazy or something, right? <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, so you, so faith and believing in God definitely helped me push through as an entrepreneur, helped me scale, and um, and, and, and the more I struggled as an entrepreneur, the bigger my faith became, right? Because I knew, like, God is not going to put me through everything he put me through for me not to come out and win on the end. I definitely, I definitely like that last statement, that God's not going to put you through anything that you can't handle, which definitely resonates with me. Um, so where can people find you um, to stay in contact with you and you have any closing words for those who are listening or aspiring to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, so you, you can definitely find me on um, all social media platforms, Ken Collier, K-E-N-N-C-O-L-L-I-E-R. You can find my company, IHR Buddy, on all platforms, social media plat handles, um, IHR Buddy. IHR Buddy, go to our website, ihrbuddy.com. Um, but yeah, so my thing, if you're an entrepreneur, something that my mentor told me that kind of changed my life is this, right? 
you know, done is better than perfect because perfect never gets done. Mm. Done is better than perfect because perfect never gets done. Right? We're so busy a lot of times waiting on the perfect moment, waiting on the perfect outfit, waiting on the perfect hairdo, waiting on the perfect business plan. We spend a lot of time waiting on, feel like we went on the perfect time, the perfect amount of money um, and all of that stuff. And a lot of times our dreams never, um, never develop, right? Because we're always waiting around on it to be perfect. Sometimes we just have to get started, jump in and try to figure out the rest of it as we go along. So remember, done is better than perfect because perfect never gets done. I, I, I like that. I like that. Um, I definitely want to say thank you, Mr. Kenny, for your time. It was definitely a pleasure to know about your business and know more about you. And for those who are listening, stay tuned for the next week's episode. I hope you guys took a few gems from this podcast. Thank you and stay blessed.